that pray to God that before I take my last breath, that there's some justice in that case. No homicide detective that really was into their craft leaves without one of those cases. Those are the cases that keep you up at night. Since 2002, I've been working on this case. And it's a 14 year old girl, 1995, walking to school in the morning. Cuts through the path. Next thing you know, residents hear gunshot. Here's a girl screaming. This young girl was raped and then shot in the face twice. 2002, I'm helping another detective. I've been in homicide two years working this cold case. And I learn about the case. I start doing some work on it. We start doing some different initiatives with DNA. We reworked the rape kit. Fast forward to 2004, a young girl's walking home from her friend's house on Father's Day. Seven years and nine days after this other young girl was killed, she's pulled into the bushes by a guy and raped, but not killed. That DNA from her rape kit matches the killer from my girl from 95. Our killer's back. We go into full swing and we think we're close to him and I'm trying everything I can. I want a national TV. We did a DNA program. We did canvas door to door because we now have a description of this guy. Gap tooth, round glasses. We could never find out who this guy was. That case stays with me. Her picture has been on my desk, taped to my wall, so I could see her photo every day. So I could say, I'm not forgetting you. I will come out of retirement and work that case for free today and donate as much time as needed to put this guy away if we can get a lead on this case. So for me, that's the only case that when I go to bed at night, I still think about it.